In Chelsea, Massachusetts, just outside Boston, there's so much jet fuel, road salt, and heating oil stored on the river, it's hard for some residents to even get close to the water. When you're young, that's the kind of thing you notice. You wouldn't see that in a white neighborhood. You wouldn't see any industries, any like smoke, any pollution. Because a lot of like the teenagers in Chelsea lived in Chelsea since they were children. These high school students are environmental activists at a nonprofit called Green Roots. I feel like adding more green space would help people in Chelsea go out more. They work alongside adults advocating for environmental justice in their hometown. I hope that they would understand and get a chance to experience that people will take them seriously when they speak to concerns and they speak to the problems that they are facing. With a group like this, so focused on environmental problems in their neighborhood, it should come as no surprise that they're also worried about climate change. We impact not just ourselves, but the whole world. They know that the world is going to get to be a harder, darker, scarier place, and imagining themselves in that world feels really scary for them. Dr. Sarah Schwartz is a professor of psychology at Suffolk University. She's been researching a phenomenon called climate change anxiety. Climate change anxiety, I think, is an appropriate and normal response to what is going on on our earth, on our globe. I think we need to recognize it as, um, as something that a lot of people are experiencing. This study published last year collected attitudes about climate change from 10,000 young people from around the world. Across all countries, 59% of youth said that they were very or extremely worried about climate change. And when it comes to how they're feeling, 62% reported anxious, 67% said sad, and 67% said afraid. The survey asked young people to respond to statements like this. The future is frightening, yes or no? Yes, the future is frightening because, you know, we see how all this has happened in such a short amount of time. And if we look into the very future without any change, it's not looking that good for us, no. People have failed to take care of the planet. Yes, the trash island, the oceans, it's not really a clean place. I am hesitant to have children, yes or no? Yes. I don't want them like catching asthma or like having to worry so much about their health. Yes, due to the fact that it just brings anxiety. Dr. Schwartz says activism may be an effective way for kids to deal with those feelings. So you can flip that one over. Her research found engaging in activism, like these students building a pop-up park in their neighborhood, may help prevent symptoms of depression. Our research does suggest that um, climate activism may serve as some sort of buffer or protective effect for climate change anxiety. And being part of that feels like I'm part of the solution. Yeah, yeah, I'm part of the solution and um, there's a whole lot of people with me doing this, so I, I'm not alone with my worries. That feels right to these young activists. And I think that if there's more people like this working towards a better future, I feel like there can be a change. It helps me deal with it like I'm not the only one. Is there are moments where you're just like, wow, nothing's ever gonna change, but then there's also that small feeling that there's still hope that people will change, that people will come together to help save humanity. Hope. It's not a strategy for tackling the challenges of climate change, but for a younger generation, it may be the best place to start. I'm David Schechter, CBS News.